So Nick, my good sir, yes. I'll start with you. So you once said that you weren't very familiar with comics when you first took, took the role. Uh, so you're coming up on your third year in this sort of deeper corner of the DC Universe. Has that changed? I may know less now. Oh yeah? <laughs> yes. Because uh, the way we do the comics, is, like we do Legends completely different than anything. Like my character in the original Baxter was an uh, opioid addict with one leg. And when I discovered that, I, I hit up Mark and Phil, and I was just like, where are we going? Are we doing this approach? Like, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. We're not, you have to pull flags. And um, since then, I just bailed away from the comics and stayed in our wheelhouse. And, uh,. Yeah, so I know less. <laughs> around, around. Yeah. Things should change for your character a little bit this upcoming season because we're entering a magical, mystical realm, and you know your characters had that historical background a little bit. Are you still going to see some of that, or is your character going to be a little bit fish out of water? This year? Um. First of all, that means Constantine has a lot of dialogue, which is great because historical stuff in a page length is, especially fictional historical things. Yeah. Memory Memorizing dates, times, and, <laughs> and things that don't exist is difficult. But uh, I don't think it's fish out of water. I think Nate segued into being a legend. Like, being a legend and adding his thing that he has to being a, a member of the team. He definitely takes more of a personal tone this season. Uh, like, his own background. You go into, like, Nate's life oh, cool. before Legends. Mm -hmm. And, um, see some conflict there and knowing where he's from, some origin stuff, which is really exciting. And we shot one episode already of it, and uh, it feels brand new to me. For my third season, our first episode is like, wow, this feels different, and it feels good. But then we went back to doing some big ass legend shit, you know? Yeah, I think, like, you know, you're such a, a, a funny guy and character. Like, my immediate question is, like, what is he hiding? And so we're finally getting around to the question. You know, people who are funny. Okay. Yeah. And and the idea that you chose this career that we've established with these line of military men. You know, we really wanted to get into the relationship with his father, you know, whom he's let down. And I think it's interesting, you know, you're so confident and, and irreverent. Like, to find that one person that can so kind of take you back to that dark place. Because, I mean, the truth is, even when you're a grown-up, you're still someone's kid. And, yeah. like, I, I, I don't know. I think that's a fun thing to explore this season. Yeah. It's going to be good. I'm curious, in the writer's room, uh -huh. because you guys get to do all of these outlandish and crazy things, yeah. you guys do things like Bebo, yeah. but you still have to keep some kind of a through line to keep the story going. Yeah. What is the balance like when we have, like, oh, we have this crazy idea, but we also kind of need to make sure it stays in the Legends world? Is there anything that's too out there for Legends, you feel, at this point? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, there was this pitch on the table for the premiere where I came into the room, the writers had been working by themselves and they were so proud you could tell you go in the room they're so proud of something like a cat who's killed a bird and they drop it and I was just like whoa and I sat, kind of told them how I felt about it and I left the room and I could tell everybody was really disappointed and then I came back into the room just being like I wonder what they did with it and they gave me a version where they barely tweaked it it's still a dead bird and I was kind of like alright you guys win we're gonna do it <laughs> it's like the inmates are running the asylum it's one of those things where you know, we found the spirit together, and nobody knows quite knows where it came from. Uh, but what we talk about, uh, most of the time in the room is not cracking jokes. It's actually just like trying to get at the emotional truth of these situations that I guess if you look at it from afar, it's crazy, but we're so close to it. Like, we're talking about it like we're breaking... You know, whatever, the Sopranos. You know, we don't, we're not thinking like, what's the goofiest thing we can come up with? It's like, how can this be real? And then when the goofiness, the stuff toy turns into a colossus and gets into a fight, I think that allows people to feel something other than, that's crazy, you know? I think like, I don't know, 
when everybody's hugging in that crater. I don't know. It feels like an honest movie. And by the way, we have a Sopranos episode coming. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys.